What's going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back in DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion tab, going through macros, taking you through how to make them and why you should be using them. Let's get into it. So those of you for the how of how to make macros in Fusion, you can skip to the timestamp below if you don't wanna know about the why. For those of you wondering why and how, just keep watching. So why would we use macros in our Fusion workflow for DaVinci Resolve? Pretty simple, they just save a bunch of time. If you've got any sort of effect that you know you're gonna be using multiple times, maybe you've built out a transition you really like, maybe you've built out a title that you really like, macros allow you to save that and that composition, but in the future, drag it into Fusion in just a single node, as I'll show you in a minute. Macros also allow you to determine the parameters that you would be able to change when you come back to that in the future. You can make it so it's just drag and drop, you won't be able to change anything, or you can make it so there is some flexibility there, which really makes them a very powerful tool, so you can create your macros with the amount of flexibility or rigidity as you need in the future. The long and short of it is macros allow you to stop making the same effect over and over and over through your fusion compositions. You can make it once, save yourself a bunch of time. So whether that's your YouTube intro, whether that's your transitions that you like using or your titles, whatever you've built, it'll make your editing experience a lot easier in the future, save you a bunch of time, but also allows you to put that extra little bit of polish that fusion allows us to do into our videos. Let's jump into Fusion. I'm gonna show you how to create these macros with a simple title composition. Here we are in Fusion with a finished text title effect here. Basically what we've got is uh, just this text flying towards the screen, sort of shine over a macro effect and a little bit of a zoom effect just to give it a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of wow. Um, so to create the macro, it's very, very simple guys. All you're gonna do is highlight everything except for your media out. You do not wanna highlight your media out. We're gonna go right click, come over to macro, create macro. This is the point where you're ready to export your macros. So if I were to just type in this and we're gonna name it something, let's go gradient flying text. If I was to press close right now and save the macro, that is gonna mean that the macro will be exactly as it is right now. I will not be able to change any elements in it. We obviously don't want that. We want our macros to be nice and flexible. We want them to be able to use again for different clients, different templates. So a simple title macro like this, we wanna make sure that we're selecting the elements we need so that we can change it in the future. You've got these columns up here for every single one of these segments. Now you'll notice that these segments represent the nodes themselves and the data within the nodes um, that you have selected. So we've got our background text, window text, the rectangle we use, DBE, original text, you can see that you've got everything there from your macro in here. What we can do now is select the different nodes that we want through these drop down menus and let DaVinci Resolve know which elements we'd like to be editable, editable? Editable in the future. So we've got our original text. If we drop down this little box, generally you could ignore the output, the mask effect and all that sort of stuff. We don't really worry about that and the image. This is more to do with the actual fusion composition than it is to do with anything else, so close that. Under this text drop down menu, you can see we've got all the elements that we can actually alter in the inspector tab when we're actually working on a text node. We've got our styled text, we've got our font, we've got our style, we've got our colors, everything that you're gonna need to change with a text. By highlighting these, I'm making sure that when I drop the macro in at a later date, I can change these and edit them as I need to when I am using them on a different project or with a different client. It's gonna save me a bunch of time and effectively make sure that I don't have to remake these macros all again. Whereas if I just locked it in the way it was, then there's really no point in me making a macro. I may as well build it out the way it was. You can leave all that. You might want your transform, so that's up to you. I don't really wanna bother with it with this, but you can basically go out everything, go through everything and make sure that you are selecting the elements that you need. Now that I've got everything I think I'm gonna to want to be able to edit in the future selected, I can press this close button. It's gonna save it. Save changes macro tool too. I'm gonna to select yes. It's gonna bring up this box here, which is just where all your macros are started. You're just gonna save, all done. Nice and easy. So now that would have closed that window and you'll be going wondering where that macro has gone all you've got to do is press shift space gradient flying text and there we have it now i can just connect this across and you can see we've got a macro there nice and ready to go 
As you can also see, if I click on the macro itself, everything that we selected is in there. So I can select my gradient here, all the start and end points, the colors in the gradient. I've got my text for both of these, both my text nodes in there, and they're ready to go. I can change the text, the font, the size, the style, which is exactly what we wanted from this title. There it is guys, very, very straightforward, very, very simple. Again guys, the biggest thing to keep in mind is when you're making a macro is just think about what you'd probably want to change in the future. For that text one, I knew I'd probably want to change the text itself, maybe the style of the text depending on the client and the gradient background there. So I made sure I baked them into the macro itself. So when I do drag and drop it in the future, I can make sure that they are there and able to be manipulated for me just so it's not too rigid. So that's probably the big thing that I want that you'd probably want to look out for when you are making macros. Make sure you are keeping in mind what you might want to change in the future because obviously if you create a macro that can't change anything, especially as that title, unless I specifically need a title that says macro on it, I'm not going to be able to use that again. And then I'm going to be building that sequence out again in Fusion, which is what I want to avoid. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I think probably, hopefully next week, uh, maybe not like a massive project coming up for a client. I'm away for like eight days shooting. So it will be a vlog of that, but hopefully I can get back into the DaVinci Resolve tutorials pretty quickly. We'll be going through a glitch text effect in DaVinci Resolve. And then after that, we will be going through how to construct a YouTube intro into Fusion so you can create an epic, epic intro or outro for your YouTube channel or just for any sort of personal branding reasons into Vinci Resolve. And that is it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. Be a good human. I'll see you soon. Cheers.